Good morning, folks. Two noteworthy eruptions took place on our star the last day. We peek in on the cosmos in motion and say goodbye to a legend of this community, one of its founders. We'll begin with what many of you saw in last night's upload, a large plasma filament released, arcing plasma into a gorgeous structure as it left, and then twisting out along a line into space. Now, one of the areas to which the plasma arced was the former sunspot departing towards the western limb. Frustrated at his inability to perform while facing Earth, he threw a quick tantrum of a solar flare that was small, barely touching C-class range, and ejected a small CME out along the plasma entry vector from hours earlier. The CME is heading 90 degrees off from Earth's position as seen here on SOHO. Solar wind here. We did get an intensification of the plasma stream, but the modest speed only and the slow onset of the impact means Earth's magnetosphere handled the wave relatively well. The next streams will be coming from the northern coronal hole, which is already visible on approach from the eastern limb over on the left. So let's go now to the lithosphere with the coronal hole still days away. We had a nice break from larger rumbles and from nearly all seismicity on the western ring of fire. The clustering in the Americas is not your usual earthquake day, especially not with the three largest over on one side. For the second time in a few days, we're looking at a mystery on Dr. Phillips' site. Their Earth-to-Sky Calculus team sent a detector from San Francisco to New Zealand and were puzzled by the dip in radiation even while staying at cruising altitude. Now their answer about magnetic latitude and inhomogeneity in Earth's magnetic field is dead on the money. Sort of. Not only does our magnetic equator not ride the actual equator of Earth, but it's not a straight line, and it moves over time. Currently, the strongest fields on Earth are at the South Magnetic Pole, just a bit south of the Aussies and Kiwis, and interestingly, the dip in the chart was just north of the equator, and that was the weakest field area through which they traveled and should have had the highest radiation. Folks, we've got 10 years of crab nebula shots from Detlef Hartmann, an amazing display showing how even over a few years, the cosmic jet blasting north and south and the expanding rings of the radiation torus reveal that even after the nova that created this gorgeous display, there is something left remaining at the center and it's unfathomably powerful. Folks, this is why we focused on the European wind maps in a previous show. This storm was brutal. High winds, torrential rain, major flooding, and it's probably not done yet. It is a bit of a somber moment as we say goodbye to John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel. He and I were friends. We spoke monthly. He attended our 2017 Observing the Frontier conference despite his health, a self-proclaimed bucket list item for him. He was integral in all of our understandings of weather and climate, and he loved this community of open-minded people. He truly did. We'll miss you, John, and we'll remember you. Makes me want to put on an even better show this year in his honor. Registration for 2018 shuts down in less than 10 days, folks. It really is your last chance to come to the Observer's event of the year. If you missed it yesterday, our app now allows you to choose whether your earthquakes are notifying at the magnitude 5 or 6 level, and with a bunch of new programs and an alert structure, I beg you to get the app before a small price increase is necessary to cover the costs. Anyone getting in now is clear. We've got the rest of your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.